What's up guys, it is Sam here, and today I wanted to tell you a little story about what is going on, or what happened over on Twitter, um, and use that as the diving board to really get into some of the psychological biases that we see in the research um, based on uh, somebody's comment over on Twitter. So, uh, if you are here for the first time, my name is Sam, what's up? If you are returning, it's good to freaking see you. Now, with that being said, let's get into it. As you can see here on my screen, hopefully, uh, we've got my Twitter profile. I'll just uh, refresh the page so you know what's up. So if you want, jump over to uh, Twitter and say what's up. There's a link in the description. But we're going to go over to notifications here. We're going to scroll down here. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Ken Warner and Mr. Miles Tulser uh, for retweeting something of mine and a shout out. So that's, that's awesome. I uh, appreciate that a lot. But this is what we're actually going to zoom in on is, whoa, Wow. Uh, is this guy right here, Alan? Um, so I was responding to this person right here, Yankster, uh, who was saying something about Yang. And as you can see, my comment is right here. I've been digging into the information around Andrew Yang within the last month or so since I learned about him. And in reality, Andrew Yang next number one on YouTube based on search volumes better than Bernie Sanders or Joe Binder. And then I put like the link to my video. He was talking about Andrew Yang in there, just trying to provide a value. And I guess this other guy who is a CEO of a company, uh, looks like a founder of a company, um, who has this little blue check mark, which just means verified on uh, Twitter. So let's go over and check out, well, let's read his comment and then go over and check out his profile. And then we'll go through these points that he makes before we dive into uh, two different types of biases. Uh, we have, oh, look at that. It was just deleted. Oh, man, that's amazing. Oh, that's super amazing because I had just recorded this video on it. You guys saw that right here. Ha, ah, that's awesome. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that dude, I had already copied his name, luckily. So let's oh, um, search for him on Twitter. That was his name. And uh, the funny thing happens, uh, nothing comes up. But before I started this video, I'm actually blocked. So what we have to do is go over to incognito mode, incognito mode in Google Chrome to pull up this guy. So here he is. <laughs> uh, good thing I started making this video before <laughs> he deleted it. Okay, so this guy is it says he's a founder. He says he's a keynote speaker. Uh, nothing bad against this dude, like, I'm sure he's a, a, well, hopefully, probably, he's a nice dude, I don't know, I have no idea who he is, he just commented on there, um, and uh, the uh, first comment that he wrote, if you remember back before he deleted it, you saw it live where he deleted it here, um, this, these are the things that come up when you search for this, let's see if anything comes up under people, yeah, no, nothing comes up under people. This the same dude? Sometimes. It looks like this is the same dude or a secondary account that he has because this one doesn't really have a lot of uh, a lot of followers. Keno you know, Dad, sometimes the politics, cyber and stuff. Okay, yeah, this is the same guy because um, I'm pretty sure this is the same dude because if you look up here at the pictures, it looks like him. Um, and uh, I looked at his pictures and this was similar. Anyways, he blocked me. I, I wasn't commenting to him as you guys saw in that post. Um, <laughs> I wasn't uh, trying to give anybody a hard time. I was just giving some type of insight on a post that I saw that somebody else was uh, that somebody else had posted, and he responded that first. He retweeted it. Then that got deleted while I was doing the research for this video. And then, as you just saw, it was deleted again. Um, so that was or the whole entire post. First, the retweet was deleted, and there was a link uh, there. Then. And I, too bad I didn't capture that. And then afterwards, uh, the whole post was deleted. Um, so the, the, the first point he had was that search results can be manipul manipulated. Um, I'm not going to even go into the manipulation of search results. Um, I, I do believe it's probably possible. However, 
that begs the question of why. Nobody's doing what I'm doing, or very few people are doing what we're doing here and looking at the data to understand what is going on. So <laughs> when you say something like that, it's like I could, you know, dig a hole in my backyard and put candy in it. And okay, like why would you do that? You, you could do that. Yeah, I see how you could dig a hole in your backyard and put candy inside of it. Why would you do that? Um, so the second, uh, and, and, and that's, that's also like, that was his first point to saying that he's not a real candidate um, or like a valid candidate. I, sp I forget the actual uh, verbiage that was used, um, but that the data can be manipulated. I think, I think we actually know what's going on when the media says anything. Um, <laughs> I think anybody who's watching this video can honestly say that they don't really put a lot of faith into what the media says. There's some truth to it, yeah, for sure. But definitely low, below 100%, and there's a lot of conjecture in there. There's a lot of opinion in there. There's a lot of biases in there. Um, uh, the, the second point was that he is not a, a valid candidate, essentially. Um, and when you look at biases, um, there's generally two types of biases. You have, and these are larger categories with different biases underneath each one of them. The first that I'm going to talk about is the cognitive biases. Um, so what is a cognitive bias? A cognitive bias would be faulty reasoning or thought processes to information. Um, emotional biases are reasoning that's based on emotions or feelings. Like there's not a, a thoughtful, logical approach to it. Um, so I think his comments, and the last one was like, no thanks, so, so I'm not even going to touch on that comment. Uh, but the first two, I think, is what I think potentially draws more um, effort or more uh, data from other people. So what I did here was I put together a list of some of these biases. As I mentioned, we're going to start at the cognitive biases. I've tried to make this nice and big so it's easier to read. Um, we have conservatism. Uh, what, and I'll just read some of this off and then we'll talk about it as we go through. Conservatism bias is a bias in which people maintain their prior views or way of thinking by inadequately incorporating new information. And some of these biases tie into other ones as well, but I think this can be seen in many different aspects of the media, it's similarly like that comment. They just don't incorporate new information. Uh, there's another one down here, which we'll get into in a second, but uh, some of these tie closely together. Uh, these, if you want to look up any of these, just Google them. There's different terms depending on which study or interest that you're in. Um, conservative bias might be called something else if you're in biology. Uh, my background is in finance and accounting, so that's where these names come from. The confirmation bias. Um, we've probably heard our parents say this, at least I think I've heard my mom say this, is where people seek out information that confirms what they already believe, while at the same time discounting the validity of data that is contradictory to what they believe. Um, I think we can probably recognize this type of bias all the time where we go out, and it's almost like what the algorithms do on social media, right? If you like something related to Trump, you'll probably see more things related to Trump. If you like other stuff, you'll probably see more stuff around that. Go through and look up, you know, Tesla, and then go through and like 20 or 30 posts and comment on 20 or 30 um, posts around Tesla, and, and you'll have more of those posts popping up in your feed. That's how the algorithm works. Um, and it almost ties into uh, the next one here, which is representative bias, is a belief in which people tend to only be capable of seeing the world through the lens, uh, in the lens that they, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see, how would I write here? The world through their lens is, basically you ha they have the specific lens that they see the world through and anything else is kind of discounted similarly to that. Um, and th this is also a subset of that is the sample size neglect. Um, 
this is where people think that a sample size adequately represents the population as a whole. And this is uh, clearly inaccurate, as you guys can see by the polling data <laughs> versus the research that we're doing when you look at Google search volume and YouTube search volume and the growth of the social media and the trends in hashtag usage. Like, it just doesn't seem accurate to me. If you get a poll of 500 people or 900 people or 1,400 people, that's, I understand what statistics says and my background, I have a background, a quant type background and studied statistics for a number of years. And I understand how it works, but it's not 100% accurate in my opinion when you look at what I'm looking at versus what this polling data is saying, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's the hindsight bias. Uh, this is basically just 2020. After you go through something, right, you go around a corner and get into an accident because you weren't paying attention. Damn, you're like, shit, I should have been paying attention. Yeah, no shit. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Uh, this is a belief that some, that after something happens, that some new, some new that has going to happen, that we thought that we could predict that it would happen. So something, after something happens, we're like, oh yeah, I saw that coming. But in reality, we didn't actually. And if you look at the data, that's clearly evident. Um, it's mixing up ex post and ex ante, which is just before the fact versus after the fact. Uh, the last uh, two, the, well, the two before we get to the last one in the cognitive biases are um, interesting. Um, the anchoring and adjustment bias. This happens when pr processing information where psychological, hu psychological heuristics influence the way people think. When people think about an, an outcome, most of the time they will already have some idea or anchor in their mind, and this anchor is the foundation for making adjustments. So if I was like, hey, can you tell me what, you know, the weather is going to be, you know, at a certain time or what the stock market's going to be or whatever. This is very, very evident in the stock market, by the way, in analysts research. Um, but they pick an anchor and whether that's accurate or not, people tend to see far departures from that anchor as less likely to happen. And even if this new information that's presented to them is valid and tremendously relevant, they discount that because it is so far away from the anchor that they've tied themselves to here mentally. And by the way, if you guys like this video, make sure to press that like button so more people can see this kind of stuff. Framing bias, I feel like this is pretty simple from if anybody's done any type of sales or has tried to get their anybody to do anything um, or you're just good at communication. If you say a question in one way versus saying exactly the same question in a slightly different way, you get two different answers, period. It's just, it's just what it is. Uh, you can Google sales videos. I mean, if I'm like, hey, can I have five bucks? Or, hey, can I have five bucks? Or, you know what I mean? They're going to get different responses on average. And that's a very simplistic way of illustrating that. But that's what's what's happening in these questions. Uh, yes, they they try to... Um, Consider this, right? I mean, hopefully, most of the people who design these surveys and it's a polling, I would like to think are professionals and would consider some of these things in the layout and the methodology they're using for the polling data. I'm sure that most of them are. Availability bias. Think of this bias as a nearsightedness bias, where the most recent data, conclusions, etc., is given higher relevance in making decisions, even though it oftentimes may not be the best information. Um, so say something super, almost exactly the same thing happened four years ago, which is happening today, but the most recent stuff in the past 12 months is what we can recall more easily. So we use that and we weight that information is much higher than something that happened four years ago because this is in the past 12 months. Happens all the time. Um, this, I feel like, one of the reasons why you there's tremendous opportunities in real estate or other things right after a bubble. 
or even like even at times now because people think a certain way because of 2008 um, and then they don't get into certain things or don't see opportunity uh, the next bias and you can take a look at these like watch this video and then go watch some of the the legacy and by legacy I mean like Fox and CNN and MSNBC and ABC and NBC and all these other players take a look at these and then just use that as a framework to try to uh, understand a little bit better the psychology that's going on with these commentators or talking heads um, that you might see on television. Now we get into the emotional or the feeling biases. Biases, um, loss aversion, which is also a very common um, known bias. And I didn't put all of them up here, I just pulled out some of them. Uh, which many of you already know. Essentially, losses or losing hurts more than the, the, the good feeling of winning or being right. So if, if you were to draw that out on a graph, and we'll, we'll take a look at this. So this is what's most commonly shown, something along the lines of this, where you have, say, one data point in uh, either way, goes up here so if you move one notch forwards here you have this area where one one notch over here you have all of this and this is a, a, a value function so this this would be gains and this would be losses so one unit of loss hurts almost twice as much as one unit of gain that's what the research shows even if my graph is uh, not perfect, uh, me drawing with a magic marker. Just for yourself, think about if you were to win $1,000 versus to lose $1,000 out of your bank account, which one hurts more? I mean, it's just common sense. I think a lot of people can, can um, clearly see some of these things once they hear the name or they put the name with it. Overconfidence bias. Again, I feel like this is probably pretty self-explanatory, but all these things are documented in the research. Um, Overconfidence bias. I feel like most people will have an idea of someone who has done or exhibited this before. Uh, they think their info is better, their ability is better, their knowledge is better, their network is better, etc., 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 etc. You can carry on that list for uh, days. But when you look at the actual results of their estimate, estimates of probability or answers to things, uh, it is clearly wrong on average. Or the, not necessarily wrong per se, depending on the, the, the structure of the question, but um, inaccurate uh, from reality. Because there's a, a clear distinction between somebody who exhibits overconfidence bias versus somebody who does not, and the outcome of their estimates for being right, winning, the probability of something happening. Uh, it, there's a clear distinction between the two. Status quo. Uh, this might be a little bit more um, petty for some people. This has been well documented too. There's some interesting research around this when it comes to retirement planning and uh, the 401k. So what they did is they took um, 401k participants at companies. And the new people who are coming in um, had to opt out meaning they were automatically enrolled in the 401k, contributing, you know, 2%, 4%, whatever it might be. And then the other group, same exact thing, except for they had to opt in. And what ends up happening is that people just kind of stay with what they're doing. You probably drive the same way to work every day. You probably eat very similar foods all the time. You probably have very similar behavior. If you go into a conference room every week, you probably sit in the same chair. If you go to the gym, you probably use the same locker or the same area in the locker room. There's This is exhibited everywhere. If, once you get up, and this is why it's also super valuable for businesses to know this, because once you get a customer, status quo, it's much easier to keep that customer than it is to get a new customer. The data. Um, regret aversion bias. This causes people to not take action or say things when they believe they should because the fear of regret. I think this is the most heady out of all these. And 
I think having a conversation around happiness and fulfillment versus money uh, is long overdue. I think we have to have that conversation around being happy with what we do and being fulfilled versus the, 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 the paradigm that success breeds happiness. If you look at the research, it's actually the reverse. There's something called positive psychology, and there's, it's a whole study, it's a whole field within psychology of study around uh, when the, it's, it's a complete paradigm shift. For decades, people believed that if you were successful, you would be happy, but it's actually the contradict to that. Um, it's the exact opposite of that. It's when you're happy, and that's a choice you get to make every single day, then that breeds success. It's, 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 that is the epicenter and success revolves around happiness. So if you're doing what you love, if you're happy with what you're doing and you choose to be happy every day, it's, it breeds success in many different ways, whether that's fulfillment and happiness in a relationship, uh, finances, um, relationships that are intimate versus friends, uh, the the um, amount of, of output and ability of you to accomplish things. It's just absolutely tremendous. Anyways, if you guys liked this video, make sure you press that subscribe button and that bell notification. You can actually take this and go back and watch the CNN analysis to see if they actually are uh, bias. Um, and I just released that yesterday where we have a two-part series going over and looking at CNN's actual YouTube channel to see what is going on with their YouTube channel if they are biased towards certain candidates versus other candidates. Uh, so go back to the channel and check that out. And share this video with other people. If you don't want to share this video, well, first of all, that sharing the video helps out the channel tremendously. I would be very grateful if you did that. But more importantly, I think the message of what we're talking about in this video needs to be put out there. Like, I don't have anything... Like, I don't come care about this dude. I could care less if he's um, who he is. He's some CEO. Like... I don't know. I, 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 I'm not trying to give him a hard time. I'm not trying to say he's a bad dude. I'm sure he's a nice guy. But it made me think about some of these biases and what, how I think versus how a lot of people think. And I mean, if you're a CEO, you're you're a a leader, right? And in this profile right here, there's a keynote speaker section. I don't know. It's I think this message, which we're, we're talking about right here, is more of what needs to go out there. Whether you like somebody or you don't like somebody in this race for nomination of the Democratic Party, I don't care. Just get the message out there that, that there's a lot, a lot of the data out there that we can take a look at. There's a different way, a different perspective of looking at things. Whether we're looking at the data or we look at things through the lens of some of these different biases out there, right? There's a lot of them. You can Google these yourself and, and go read some of the studies on them. Anyways, I appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget to press that thumbs up button on your way to the next video. That also tremendously helps the channel out. If you got any video, value out of this video, make sure you press that thumbs up button. It tells YouTube to show this video to more people. And now I'm going to jump over to here and stop this. Peace.